Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Promo Minds podcast interview series. Today I have someone very special on. We're going to be discussing all things video related and I have Vicky O'Neill. She has been just phenomenal at keeping consistent on LinkedIn. Every time I go on, her posts are the first things that pop up. So, I mean, that tells me two things. Number one, she's very consistent. And number two, she's got a lot of value to add because I'm always engaging with her content. Uh, she started her own marketing company back in 2012 as a side gig after being in the corporate career for many years in various different industries. Um, her marketing company is called Ken K Marketing. And um, in 2019, she started focusing 100% on video, which is very fascinating to find all the depths in that. So I'm very much looking forward to it and to see like the insights that she's discovered and why she came up with that or why she dove into that. So very excited to do that. And um, she started off, she's shy and still an introvert, but she decided to dive in, which I think is really cool because that's a lot of people go through the same things that, that she dealt with. But she did it. She's done it all. She's done live recording, pre-recorded, long form, short form on all the, all the various platforms. So please welcome to the show, Vicki O'Neill. Hey, Steve. <laughs> Hi, Vicki. Thanks for coming on to the show today. I'm very much looking forward to this conversation because, like I said, every time I go on LinkedIn, I always see your posts and it's always something new and engaging. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Well, that makes me happy that you see my content when you get on there. So thank you. And thank you for engaging with it too. Absolutely. And I got to say, out of this tr true spontane uh, spontaneity, I guess, there was one time where I posted a video and you happened to reach out and because I was using CapCut. And you said, you know, you can actually turn <laughs> off the, uh, the CapCut ending, which I had no idea. So... You are the reason that I'm able it to. It's such an easy tip to share yeah, too. <laughs> yeah, so I very much appreciate that. And so jumping right in, I'm, I'm curious about this. So before the show, you had mentioned that, you know, you were doing the corporate thing and, and then you were, it led to you deciding to wanting to start your own marketing company as a side gig. And I'm curious what, exactly led to that decision. So I, I don't know if maybe you can elaborate on um, more specifically what industry you were in prior to that. Um, but yeah, I'm curious to know what led to that decision. That's an interesting question. <laughs> um, so I worked in various industries. Um, I actually worked at the company that started the Yellow Pages back in the day. I didn't, I wasn't there when they first started, but you know, I worked at the company. Um, I've worked in automotive, I've worked in publishing, I've worked in um, manufacturing, worked at a marketing agency. So I've worked in like different capacities um, in both marketing and sales. And what I realized through all the different experiences is that each time I got into a role, I loved it. You know, you get into a new role, you're like passionate about it, you love it, you're doing your thing. And then very quickly, I'd realize like, oh, let's do this. We can make this better. How about if we streamline this and make this better? Which you would think would be, you know, welcomed with open arms by your leadership team. And a lot of times it was not. So I quickly realized that it would be easier and better for me, at least long term, if I did my own thing. So I started Ken K Marketing in 2012, and the tagline is, make your own rules because you need to do things your own way. Not saying, you know, break speed limits or, you know, break the law by any means, but when it comes to business and really creating what you want, you need to make your own rules in order to make it work for you. So I started it as a side gig because people would come to me back then just knowing that I was in marketing and say, Hey, do you know anybody who could create a logo? Do you know anybody who could create a website for me? I did but I didn't want to do those sorts of things. So I would always outsource them. And I'm like, you know what, this is like 
you know, the universe is speaking to me. It's time to take that first step, start my business. And I could see myself doing it long-term full-time. I just wasn't ready at that time to like dive in. So just over the years of doing site projects, and it was kind of on and off there for a while, I decided that there were, there were different signs too that were kind of coming at me that were like directing me to make that decision to move forward and go all in on my business. So um, since 2000, fall of 2018 is when I've been all in. And then it was 2019 when I went all in on video. Wow. So in 2000, or I guess up until 2018, what kinds of marketing avenues were you utilizing? Um, you mean online marketing? Yeah. yeah, so it depended on my role. The last couple of jobs that I had in corporate were sales. In one of those sales roles, which was actually at a marketing agency, I was leveraging Snapchat. That's when they, people first started using that for business. Um, I was using Twitter. I was using Facebook. I think those were the three primary ones. Um, and then the role after that, I came up with more like they were doing marketing already, but they didn't have anything in place to measure. So there weren't any KPIs. They didn't know what was working, what wasn't working. So I put that into place so that we could start identifying what was working. And that was a problem because <laughs> I identified what was working and they didn't like it. So, you know, it created some friction there. Um, so, I mean, I've, I've tried all different things in different roles, but those were like the more recent ones in the corporate world. Awesome. And then, so once you finally went headfirst into, you know, this is 100% what I'm doing, a year later, you recognized just how powerful the use of video would be. And that's when you decided to like really focus in on that. And is that like, what, how did that come about? How, how did you see that uh, transition, I guess? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, initially, I saw an opportunity for, because my background's marketing and sales, and I didn't see a lot of people, it was either you were marketing or you were sales. I didn't see anybody really focusing on both of them. So I thought that would be my opportunity to combine my skill sets and go into like mid-sized businesses and help them align those two teams. Because there's a lot of disconnect even today of marketing and sales teams. They just don't talk, you know, one's pointing the finger at the other. So I just saw, you know, an opportunity to do that. I learned over that year that mid-level or, or uh, high-level positions at those mid-sized companies did not want someone coming in there to tell them how to make things better. <laughs> so I started thinking like, how can I differentiate myself? Because the online marketing space is so saturated that I just didn't want to get in there and be another me too. And like try and figure my way to stand out. So I kind of leaned into my history of being on camera and creating videos. And I created my first video on YouTube. It's unlisted right now, but I share it with people all the time. It's awful. <laughs> it was back in 2011, I think was when I started the channel. And I posted my very first video. And to this day, it just makes me cringe because I was trying to make it perfect. I remember, I mean, right now I'm even feeling anxiety thinking back on it because it was just like, you know, trying to get the right lighting, trying to get the right space in the room so you had the right background and trying to memorize my script. You didn't have, you know, teleprompters back then that you could use. Um, so it was a little bit different if you wanted to use that. Um, but I just remember being like, this isn't right. This isn't right. And I just hours upon hours to get this one video done. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. I'm like, I can't do this. So after one video, I was like, I'm not going to do this anymore. And it was almost a year later, I did my second video. I don't remember doing that one, but um, if you look at my history, it was like another year before I did. <laughs> so it was like, I know that that whole like, you know, anxiety and perfectionism and trying to make it, you know, awesome was part of what I was experiencing and part of like what I wanted to, you know, have the output be. I wanted it to be really good, but I didn't want anybody to see that I was trying to make it really good. That's part of the problem. When you try to hide what you're trying to do, then it actually comes out 
and is, you know, projected even more so. Um, and then just through conversations and with, you know, so many different capabilities with creating videos and all these different platforms and all the different types, you know, with short form and just the entertainment value that's in some of them. There were just so many things I'm like, you know what, I need to focus on this thing and, and lean into the struggles that I had, the insecurities I had, the perfectionism that I was trying to, you know, create in my, you know, quote unquote process and help others eliminate that or avoid it or get past it sooner if they're already in that space. And that's where I found that there was, there were more people than I thought that were actually experiencing that same thing and that I could actually help them get over that. That's amazing. That's, uh, it's funny because listening to you share your answer on that, there's a lot of things that, um, I guess resonated with me and kind of similar timeline too, with 2018, 2019, seeing that shift of, you know, how do you, how do you bring together the sales and marketing aspect and mm -hmm. then including video, uh, like I remember my boss at the time was against using video and, uh, like I, I was in the swimming pool industry and we would get calls all the time from homeowners just basically wanting more, um, uh, more, more marketing material on seeing different options for liners in backyards, not just like, here's a cutout mm -hmm. liner. How do I visualize this better? And then, so I started using uh, just video off the cell phone to create these, you know, 30 second videos or whatever to showcase some of the cool features in a, in a liner pattern, but then also just, Mm -hmm. put some photos together because we didn't have any real videos and make a video of photos to display that. But I had the same kind of realizations yeah. that, that you had. And um, you had mentioned towards the end of your answer there about seeing the opportunity with how universal the feeling of, you know, being shy in front of a camera or uh, not really mm -hmm. knowing or I guess the perfectional perfectionism or whatever, right? Like wanting it mm -hmm. to be the best uh, thing and, and kind of getting into analysis paralysis, so to speak, where you're trying to yes. make it so perfect that you don't put anything mm -hmm. out. Um, yeah, exactly. Now I know. <laughs> and that's what I tell people today is to focus on progress instead of perfection. So perfection is actually the killer of progress. Mm -hmm. So I, I try and help present it that way to get them to think that, okay, that's completely logical. If you're focusing on perfection, the more you focus on it, you're wasting time and you're never going to get it anyway. I, I personally don't believe that, you know, perfectionism even exists like the perfect video. It doesn't exist maybe in the person's eyes who created it, because that's what they thought they wanted, or what they thought was perfect. But our versions and everybody's versions of perfect is different. So you can't ever achieve it because it doesn't exist. So don't spend time trying to get there. Just focus on getting it done and then learn from what you could have done better and then apply it to the next time and get better with the next one. That's so true. My girlfriend just, shared something with me last night. I, I can't remember the exact quote or who actually said it, but um, she said, I guess paraphrase here about how th the first video is not, you're not going to like it, right? Like it's, it's going to be bad. I assume it's going to be bad, right? but you can't yeah. get to the hundredth video without starting with one. And you know, once you get to a exactly. hundred videos, you're going to be a lot better. So. Uh, yes. I always tell people don't compare your chapter one to somebody else's chapter 20. That's a great way to look at it. <laughs> and that's. <laughs> compare your chapter one to your pre chapter. <laughs> compare yourself to yourself and just look at the progress that you're making individually. And that's going to give you more energy. It's going to make you more excited about the process and actually getting better. 
But I mean, you, I know I've experienced this. If I look at, there's people out there right now that if I go look at their videos, I'm just like, man, they've got great videos and they haven't been doing it as long as I have. Well, they're also not on five platforms. They're focused only on the one. And that actually helps create better content because you're focused on one platform. Yeah. So you have to kind of dig a little bit too, just to see what the reason is. Hey guys, if you're looking for a great book to read as it pertains to presentation skills, one book I would recommend is The Presentation Secrets of Steve Jobs by Carmine Gallo. This book has a lot of great tidbits for preparing for a speech or presentation, whether it's a webinar or in front of a live audience. It's really good and really useful. I. I found it very handy when I was first getting started with my presentations, and I definitely recommend checking it out. That's The Presentation Secrets of Steve Jobs by Carmine Gallo. All right, let's get back to the show. Absolutely. So one of the things that I've seen you talk about is um, <clears throat> going into more uh, tips and tricks, I guess, about like how to prepare for getting in front of the, the camera if you're just new to it or, or you're looking to get into that, but you're still, you know, having that, that um, shyness or the, the fear of public speaking sort of thing come into play. Is there, um, are there any tips that you could share with the audience about, you know, if, if you are looking at getting into this and you do feel that hesitation what are a few th simple things that they could maybe do on their own to to um, move forward with that? Yeah, that's a great question. I think there's a lot of people, I think you mentioned it early too, that there's a lot of people who are introverts, meaning that myself included, I'm an introvert. Um, and that just means that I, I get my energy from being alone. Um, so I almost have to prepare and like mentally, you know, prepare myself to be like, at an in-person networking event. Um, extroverts are just like, hey, let me at it. You know, that's where they get their energy. So being an introvert going on camera isn't that bad. It's the mental preparation of thinking through it and saying, okay, once this video is out there, what are people going to think, right? That's what most people think. At this point in my life, you know, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I've been through enough that I mean, if you don't like my video, you're not going to bother me. Um, but there's people that they're just like, you know, they're just getting started. And I did. I cared a lot about my video when I put it out because I'm like, oh, my gosh, this this is bad. You know, and again, comparing myself to somebody else. So one of the things that I did is it really is a mindset shift, just like with a lot of things. If you're challenged with doing anything, if you're procrastinating, if you're almost like forcing yourself to get on camera. One thing is, is like, you have to focus on the reason why you're doing it. If you're doing it just to create videos for the heck of it, or somebody else is like, you have to create videos. It's probably going to be a little more challenging. No, probably a lot more challenging to actually create the video content. If like me and your business and you, you know, you want to be visible. That's a way to connect with people, connect with more people at the same time and the reason why you want to do that is, you know, if you're the face of your brand, more people are going to see you and they're going to get to know, like, and trust you faster, even like, you know, watching a video than it would be to go into a room of, you know, a thousand people. And I try to have people imagine that if you wanted to expand your network or expand the number of people that you're touching to, let's just say a thousand, you walk into a room of a thousand people in order for you to have a conversation with each person. I mean, <laughs> I don't even know how much time that would take. But if you've got one video with that same message that you're putting out that a thousand people watch, now it makes more sense as to why I would want to create a video. So you almost have to get into that, that mindset first and kind of like think through the reason why you're creating this video and it helps a little bit. Then the next thing is, is that, you know, everybody has a phone. So, you know, pick up your phone and know that the first video you record you're, you can throw it away, just trash it, doesn't matter. Press record. It could be like, you know, my cat's over there sleeping right now. I could just pick up my phone and walk over and just like, you know, turn it on, walk over there, take a vi video of her, turn it off. 
there's my video. No one knows, but I'm practicing pressing record. Then I'm going to build up from there. You trash it if you want to keep it because it's your cat. That's fine. <laughs> um, but then you look at it and say, okay, what can I do next? And then you add voice to it. You start talking to it. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm walking over, you know, so you start building up and you add layers. Then you're like, okay, I'm going to put myself on camera. And then it's like, okay, that's where the anxiety starts. But you've taken all those other steps and you've already pressed record. So this is the next logical step in the process. So I always like to compare it to, um, like for me, you know, running or, you know, exercising. That's one of the things I love to do. And I know some people are challenged with that. You know, they just don't want to go work out. Well, if you've never worked out in your life before, but you want to lose 50 pounds, you're not going to like go out and buy all the clothes and the shoes and go to the gym and like work out for three hours and come back and expect to be like super fit right? It's a process. You may have to just put on your shoes that day and that's it. That's the step that you take because you hate working out that much. Then the next day you might put on your shoes and just like leave them on all day. And that's like step number two, you're taking baby steps. And a lot of times that's what it is when something is that we really don't want to do it. We have to just look at the reason why we're doing it and then find those steps that we can take that build up to where we want to be. Yeah. It's interesting that you say that because um, that's one of the things that helped me with um, getting into like ultra running and that. And it's so true how it relates to all these different areas like creating videos is just, um, I guess, having like a minimum target even. Like if you, some days you might have that, that energy to, you know, get in front of a camera and, and record like a two minute video, even if you do nothing with it. Right. Mm -hmm. But then there's mm -hmm. other days yeah. that, you know, you're just, you're not feeling it and you don't see, you would, you would rather jump off a bridge than, <laughs> than record a video. Right. <laughs> but it's, yeah. What is a, wh what's an action you could take that is so minute that it's hard for your brain to say no to. And, more about building that habit or that consistency of like, okay, I'm going to grab the, the camera and like you said, record your cat or record something, yeah. right? It doesn't have to be you. Yeah. And I think that's, that's a very good, um, that's a very good way to continue building the habit without beating yourself up because you didn't follow through and record an entire video because there are days yeah. that, you know, you're just, you're not in the zone for it. You don't feel like doing it. Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of it too comes down to setting the right expectations for you and where you are in your journey. So your journey is different than mine and my journey is different than Mr. Beast, you know, the biggest name on YouTube. Um, you know, we all have different goals, um, but we're all on video. And I think it's important that anyone who is just really like feeling anxiety, they know they need to, but they don't know where to begin. You know, the whole thing is, is just figuring out what those steps are that are going to help you get to where you want to be. And it is sometimes, you know, there's some people who are just like, you know what, I'm going to grab my phone. I'm going to record a video right now and I'm going to post it on LinkedIn. And they're going to put in their text. Hey, this is my very first video. I didn't plan for this. I was feeling it. I decided to just put myself out there. Tell me what you think. And then you have to mentally prepare for, you know, people to be supportive because they're going to be supportive. I have never seen somebody post a video saying that they put themselves out there and people are just trashing them. <laughs> Everybody's just like, oh, congratulations. We're so proud of you. This is awesome. Keep up the good work. Like people are surprisingly supportive. Yeah. But you also have to prepare yourself in case there is a hater out there. I mean, because people just are that way. Um, but it's okay. It's their issues that they're portraying on you. It's not any direct correlation to you. I mean, I applaud and celebrate people who have the gall or are willing to just put themselves out there so quickly to get over that hump and just put it behind them. Because once you've done it and it's behind you, you can check it off your list and say, I did it. I mean, that's a moment to celebrate. You know, you did it. Now you can look at, okay, so 
if this is something I want to keep doing now, what do I want to do to make it consistent? That's where it comes down to creating a plan. And I think people who are challenged with getting on video sometimes to just like, I don't know where to begin. You know, if it's the taking the baby steps to lead up to that point, that that might be for one set of people. But there could be an, a separate group of people who are like, um, okay, I'm fine being on camera. I just, I don't even know what to do. I don't know where to begin. It just, it seems overwhelming. And that's where it comes down to creating a step-by-step -step plan. So yeah, sure, you can pick up your phone and you record something, but what are you going to say? How good is the message going to be? How supportive is it going to be of your business or whatever you're, you know, you're in? Maybe you're working for a corporation. How well is that going to represent their brand or your team or your manager? You know, so you really do need to sit down and think through a plan of what type of videos, how long is it going to be? What topics are you going to talk about? Where are they going to be placed on social media? Or are they going to be like video sales letters? Are they going to be ads, video ads? Are they going to be placed on your website? Um, what's the message going to be? What's your call to action to be, going to be? There's so many different things that you have to think through before you plus record. <laughs> so when you put that in place, though, and I talk about this all the time in like my webinars, my workshops, my events, even in the videos I post online, it's plan on spending the majority of your time in the planning stage. So you've got planning, recording, editing, and publishing. I break it down into those four steps. Prep, planning, recording, editing, publishing. If you spend the majority of your time in planning, so you're coming up with your topics, you're planning your hook, your talking points, your call to action, you're even writing your description or your captions, you're coming up with your hashtags, your tags on YouTube, you're coming up with your thumbnail, you're doing all that stuff in planning. When you go to hit record, it's going to be super easy. Well, I don't want to say super easy because that might offend people. It's going to be easier when you have a plan in place than if you just go at it willy nilly. Absolutely. <laughs> and then it makes the editing easier. It makes the publishing easier because everything's already done. So spend the majority of your time in the planning phase. That was a really long answer. <laughs> I apologize. No, that was great. There's a lot of gold nuggets in there. And I believe you have a uh, like a template or something that um, speaks to that, don't you? Yeah, it's the uh, it's my um, video planning guide that is free that people can download. They can just go to my website, vickyodaniel.com and then um, slash plan, and they can download it for free. And they'll have access to all that. I walk through actually step by step, focusing on the planning stage so they have everything that they need to get started. Amazing. I will put that in the show notes because I think it is very, okay. very valuable for, for people to, you know, that are just starting out. They, they're looking for guidance. They're looking for assistance. And I think that would be yeah. very beneficial for them. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. How's your video experience been? Like you started around the same time I did, like, where are you at now with your videos? Are you doing like the planning and you feel confident you're moving forward? So with my videos now, um, I have like a subject that I like to, that mm -hmm. I want to speak on and I'll do like mm -hmm. a little bit of thought process where, um, you know, just kind of make some points on some things that I want to touch on, but then Mm -hmm. I set up my, my gear and I go into it and like, I, I have those topics top of mind because I've spent some time writing them down and then, yeah, I just, I just go with it. But like in the beginning, how it started and not even that long ago, um, for the podcast, this was kind of a new thing for me. Like I had done some, uh, I guess, marketing or sales videos for the company that I worked for simply because there were things that, um, I guess like frequently asked questions that I found so annoying because I've got asked them all the time. And I thought, why not create a simple tool once that I can send out to all these people or they can find it themselves. And then that way I don't have to answer the same question as much. It's just now I get to, uh, to educate people on, on some of the, um, I guess, some of the tools that we have and, and whatnot. 
And so switching over into the podcast, again, I, I've done like, I've done public speaking. I've, I've was a musician for like a decade and played in front of all these people. And when you hit record and you're in, it's just you and the camera, it's a whole different feeling because you don't have that adrenaline going through you. So you <clears throat> have to raise your energy level, but then also get that, um, I don't know, get out of your head, so to speak, as we discussed earlier about, you know, the perfectionism and, and whatnot. And it's yeah. really like, it's kind of like, it's kind of like the first draft of a book or a, an article or whatnot. Um, I heard Neil Strauss talk about this on Tim Ferriss's podcast uh, a few years back where he said the first draft of your book is for your eyes only. And that's kind of how I treat it starting to record for my podcast was in the, t in the back of my mind. I'm like, well, if I, if, if something goes wrong, because I had issues with my camera where it was constantly auto-focusing. And in the beginning, mm -hmm. it was like I had an idea, but I didn't really have a whole... Uh, I, I didn't spend enough time planning it. I just, here's my topic. I'm going to talk about it. And I would talk for like an hour. <laughs> and <laughs> But the cool thing about it was after I did a... a two or three of those, I could see the key snippets that I wanted to talk about or that made the most sense. And so when I went back and re-recorded it with better equipment, then I was able to take it from being an hour long to like 15 or 20 minutes. So it cut out a lot of the jargon and I have a, I have a squirrel attacking my window right now. Um, oh, <laughs> I'm like, I hear my cat over here. I'm just waiting for him to come over here. <laughs> oh, I, I, uh, I was able to cut out a lot of the jargon and really hone in on the key pieces that were top of mind. It's just, I didn't know how to extract that. And that's when I started doing the, well, let me come up with my topic but then also let me think about what I actually want to say. And then it's not like having to write out a whole script. It's just here are some key points that I really wanted to talk about within this. And then I, I, I feel I have enough confidence in sculpting it all together. It's just a matter of knowing the points you want to talk about. Yeah, that's good. It sounds like you've got a really good process in place too. And you built up to that point based on experience. So you did one thing and you're like, okay, now I can take it to the next level. And you kind of did that same thing that most of us take is, you know, the steps that continue to help us improve and move past that. Yeah. And it's really about like, like we said earlier, just starting, like mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you have a basic idea of what you want to do. But it's like you're seeing, you're walking through the fog basically, and you can't see the next step until you take the first step. And once you do that, yes. then you start to see like, um, oh, well, I, yeah, you could improve some things moving, moving on to the next process, but it's not like what you've done is so atrocious that it's going to completely turn people off, right? Like, you got to yeah, be willing to put yourself exactly. out there. Yes. <laughs> there has to be a level of risk involved. Yeah. But you also have to look at, is it worth the risk? Yeah. So the longer you wait to get on video, you have to think that there's people who watch more video today than ever before, you know, regardless of the platform. So, and there's more and more people who are realizing that they're starting to create videos for themselves. So logically, the longer you wait to get started, the more you're going to be behind. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. <laughs> so that's why I encourage people <laughs> that if it's going to take a while to get on camera and actually record the video to publish for others to see, then to start taking those 
those small steps now and work up to it. Yeah. And I guess to go in that, that notion is um, keeping it simple as well so that it's not like a whole, um, like the thought of just setting, setting up and, and getting to the point where you can hit record can seem like such a daunting mm -hmm. task if you're, if you don't realize that, you know, just get a basic setup that's only takes a couple minutes to, yeah. to do because like you said earlier, uh, you know, the perfectionism can hold you back. And if you're waiting for the right lighting and everything, or if your hair's messed mm -hmm. up or something that can just, you know, set you back that can put you into that uh, paralysis state again. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think too, that looking at other people's setup is not a good thing for people who are just wanting to get started because those are the people who have, you know, they've been making money from their videos. So they continue to buy nicer and better equipment or have really nice setups. So what I tell people is that you have with you right now, every single person who's either watching this video or listening to this podcast has with them the only thing that they need to get started. So there is no excuse. There is no equipment excuse. We all have a phone. The camera on our phones today is as good as the cameras, the professional cameras that people used like 10 years ago. So that's the quality of the cameras that we have on our phones today. So there's no reason to not get started. We all have windows. So if you've got a window that's got light coming through, it doesn't have to be direct light. In fact, that would be awful. That gives you something to get started. If it's in a quiet space or you have a headset, which we all have, then you have what you need for audio to record your video. That's all you need to get started. That's it. Yeah. Keep it simple. <laughs> you just have to press record that it doesn't get any, it literally does not get any simpler than that. Absolutely. So another question for you here for <clears throat> a solopreneur or a, a small business, um, they're, let's say they're just getting into video. What mm -hmm. would you suggest some of the, uh, types of videos or, um, not so much topics, but maybe just, just kind of like a, a general, um, uh, just a general type, what would be some recommendations or some suggestions that, um, you know, small business owners or, or solopreneurs should consider when, um, starting into the, the video creation? Yeah, that's a good question. Cause that's one of the things that people are always like worried about, like, where do I even start? What do I talk about? <clears throat> and if, regardless if you're a solopreneur or a, um, you know, you're, you're working in a small business, even if you're the owner, if you're, you know, one of the people who work there, um, some of the things that you can do to get started is B-roll. So that's one of the easiest things for people to do. And you don't have to be on camera. You can, or you don't have to be. So that's, again, if you just want to use your phone and I've done this, I've got, um, on my YouTube channel, I know I've posted them on LinkedIn too, but it'd take too long to get to it. If you go to my YouTube channel, I've got um, shorts as well as regular videos where I talk about different topics that you can use to get started. Like here are three, here's B-roll ideas. The B-roll ideas is like a short that I did as a B-roll video with B-roll ideas as text overlay. <laughs> So it's just like, I just gave a bunch of ideas there. I think there's 15 in that one. So that's as easy as like taking your phone. Let's say you do want to be on camera. You could take your phone and just set it. If you don't have like a, you know, a little tripod that you could sit on your desk. Um, you could even set it up against your, you know, your computer screen, or if you've got a bookshelf and just set the phone up, you know, press record, go to work. You could even do it on um, time-lapse where if you're going to be like up and about and, you know, doing other things, that's where it goes like, you know, super fast. Um, and then just record. So you're going to be working, you're going to be on the phone, you're going to be doing things. If you're in an office, you might be talking to somebody, you get up from your desk, you go do something, you come back, 
you've got all kinds of B-roll just from having your phone sit there while you work. If you don't want to be on camera, you can have your, like if you're in an office, you could do a tour of the office. Um, you could do a tour of the outside. You could talk about the building. You could talk about the business. Um, and if you're talking about the business, you could talk about different things like the sign in the business. Um, if you don't want to do any voice, just do audio and then put text on screen, you know, throughout the video that starts and stops. Um, there's so many different things that you can do to get started. Um, behind the scenes, like I did one one time when I was, I don't know why I was editing a podcast episode because it seems like it was more recent. I think I was actually just doing it for B-roll. <laughs> I don't think I was actually editing a podcast episode because I didn't, I haven't had my podcast since like last year. Um, but I pulled it up so I could do like B-roll. So I had my phone and I had it up on my big screen and then I had my phone and I was like, one hand I was recording you know, with my phone and then I had my mouse on the other one, like I was actually editing the audio. I mean, you do that for 10 seconds and you've got B-roll. You put a message on there about how simplified something is in your process, or it could have been like, um, you know, here's how you can take out mistakes in, you know, your process easily. If it's like a podcast episode, you can apply whatever you're doing to something like that. Um, but there's, there's a lot of different things you can do. It's just, you have to think about like your day and like what's going on. You could set your phone down in your car and I'll let, I know in Ohio, you can't have your phone in your hand anymore, but you could set it down and just have it like recording you while you're driving. I've done that before too, and used it as B-roll. <laughs> I mean, we're surrounded by different ideas. We just have to sit and kind of think through like, where can I capture something that I can use to get started? Absolutely. That's a, that's a great suggestion too, because uh, I guess the majority of people that I talk to with um, my own business is just more contractors. And I find a lot of them, they, they're really good at what they do, but they do not want to get in front of a camera or they just don't fully understand the technology. So, um, you know, coming up with other ideas in order to uh, take advantage of video, but then also do it in a way that's comfortable for um, for the contractor as well. So that's a those are some great ideas. When you say a contractor, what's an example of a contractor that you work with? Um, well, for instance, one of them builds <clears throat> high end uh, cottages, um, more like with ICF. And that um, another one is a plumber, and um, I even have uh, a buddy who's uh, doing cleaning services, but he's like contracted for um, like construction cleanings. So it's it's kind of mm -hmm. neat to see all the different <clears throat> um, different trades or different areas that way. But um, it's yeah, something that I enjoy is just coming up with the best way to communicate what they're trying to what they're trying to say and communicate it in a way that the <clears throat> customer or their customer understands or is looking for so it's it's, mm -hmm. a, it's an interesting challenge yeah i mean it, I, I don't know the ins and outs of that but the first things that were coming to my mind as a plumber is talking about you know depending on actually i talked about that in one of my podcast episodes i think I know it was someplace it might have been in one of my events where I used a plumber as an example, um, you know, because a, a plumber can be all different types of things they can do or do different types of things. They could be, you know, somebody who works with um, land developers, you know, creating like a residential or a commercial area. And that requires a lot of planning up front, being involved, piping like that's very detailed. That's one type of, you know, plumber or segment of their business that they might focus on. Then you've got like your, you know, plumber where you need somebody to come in and, you know, maybe repipe the house or they need to take care of the pipes under the kitchen sink because it's, you know, it's not working anymore. And then you've got the 24 seven or 24 hour emergency service type services or plumbers. So under, you know, better understanding like what services they actually provide and then tapping into if it's a, you know, traditional plumber where, you know, I'm having an issue in my kitchen and I need a plumber to come out and take a look at it. It's not an emergency because the pipe didn't burst, but I need them to come out and take a look at it, you know, at some point soon. Um, 
you know, there's messaging and tips and things that that plumber can do or say and create videos on, on, um, you know, when, and I bring this up because I did not know in, uh, my house I lived in a, a few years ago, um, I don't know if I'm going to show my blondness or if I'm going to show like my stupidity, <laughs> but I'm going to go for it anyway. Um, I use a French coffee press. So it's like, there's always coffee grounds in it. So I have to clean it out every day. I was putting the coffee grounds in the garbage disposal side and thinking that turning on the garbage disposal, you know, was going to actually flush it through and I didn't have to worry about it. Well, apparently that clogs your pipes whatever that goes through. And I ended up having to get a plumber, like right before I sold my house, you know, I had an inspection go through and there was something wrong with the pipes. So I had somebody come out and, and I remember him coming up and being like, do you drink a lot of coffee? And I'm like, I drink it in the morning. Like most people, why? And he's just like, do you put your coffee grounds down the garbage disposal? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, why? And he's just like, that's the problem. You can't do that. And I'm like, what? I've been doing that the entire time I've lived here. <laughs> and he's like, you can't do that. I'm like, all right. So, um, you know, it's stuff like that. The plumber can do tips and even like kind of not without revealing people's names. I mean, I wouldn't care, but it, they don't have to reveal people's names, but talk about tips of things that you can do to maintain the healthiness of your pump, the plumbing in your house, you know, so you don't want to put coffee grounds down it. You know, you don't want to put, um, I forget there's something else. Oh, like the tops of strawberries, you know, the green parts that you cut off, you know, those aren't supposed to go through there. There's things that they could do to create videos like that. And they could either be on camera or off camera, but there's like unlimited number of topics that they could talk about. That's a plumber. I, you know, I mean, that's just from my own experiences. I'm sure there's all kinds of topics and tips that they could actually create videos on. There's content there. They just have to think about it. Oh, absolutely. There's, I, I would say that, the one of the biggest or i guess the the most common things that um i typically go to is just like the explainer video for um mm -hmm. like if you were to hire someone for a specific job whether it's mm -hmm. building a new addition or like you said with the plumber like there's there's various different things that you could do, but if you specify, if you niche down on a couple things and it's like, okay, so if, if someone were to, was looking for this, what sort of thing is going through their mind or what kind of experiences are they having that is leading them to find this service and then to yes. really um, <laughs> talk about those things, much like you said about the coffee grinds, like that, I would have never thought of what, what my mind goes to is like the, um, uh, some of the, uh, like the Tide pods or whatever, like, um, some of those mm -hmm. can mm -hmm. get clogged up in the drains and, um, grease. You mm. don't want to dump grease down the, the drain. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. yeah, but yeah, so there's various <laughs> things that you shouldn't be doing. Right. And then that's just one of those things yeah. that you could speak on. Like, Oh, did you do this? Well, this is what you need to do. And, uh, yeah. yeah. So that, yeah, the, the possibilities. Well, I know that there's going to be, there's, I know that there's, and I don't know the name of the channel cause it's been a while, but, um, when I was doing that podcast episode or video, whatever it was I was doing, I was looking up different examples that I could talk to. Um, there is a very popular, we're talking like hundreds of thousands of subscribers on, I think it was YouTube. And it's, a, I mean, like if you talk to plumbers, they could probably tell you who this person is, but he's got a massive following and he does residential plumbing, but it's because he's doing it. And I think he actually adds like some humor into it. He's got like all different types. Like if you look at his channel, it's not like every video looks the same. Mm -hmm. Not that that's a problem because um, you do what works best for you. But um, he was probably just being real and authentic and providing value. And people are just like, hey, this is kind of unusual. Because I mean, most people don't think of, hey, I'm going to go look up plumbing videos unless you're somebody who likes to do it yourself. And then, of course, you're going to look those up on YouTube. Um, and he might have been like the first result. And then it just kind of you know, spread like wildfire, wildfire from there. Yeah. That's, um, it, it, well, 
it reminds me of another channel um, more in the swimming pool industry for uh, it's called Swim University, but it's they started out there was nothing special about them. It was just they were recording themselves with with like a cell phone in a backyard and just putting it together of this is what you do for certain things. And so I'd imagine it'd be the mm -hmm. same sort of thing. And it's, they have, you know, millions of views and hundreds of thousands of subscribers. And it's literally just talking mm -hmm. about common mm -hmm. um, occurrences that every swimming pool owner would, uh, a question that they would always have. So mm -hmm. yeah, there's, there's various different things. Yeah. And they could even like tap into, um, I know Mr. Beast has done videos before that have something to do with a swimming pool. I think at one point they did like a bunch of, um, like a bunch of those balls. Like you go into a ball pit. I think they filled like an entire pool with like the balls yeah. and just kind of like, you know, you were diving in and stuff. Um, but if you use Mr. Beast's name in a YouTube video and even on the title and you have it on your thumbnail, I mean, you're going to get all kinds of views. Yeah. So you got to know what to tap into, especially on YouTube. I mean, on all the channels, but YouTube's a little bit more um, about thumbnail, you know, and, and title driven um, and just knowing like, you know, what to do with those and the design and stuff like that. But um, just knowing that kind of stuff, you know, you can get good traction when you plan ahead. It's amazing how it always comes back to planning. I know. <laughs> <laughs> when you fail to plan, you plan to fail, right? Absolutely. Benjamin Franklin. Absolutely. Hey guys, if you're into hiking at all, I highly recommend subscribing to my YouTube page, Steve Leslie Hikes. That's Steve Leslie Hikes on YouTube. I have a lot of content on there from some of the crazy hikes that I've been on, including Angel's Landing in Zion National Park. And it'd be really cool to connect on there. So please check me out. Thanks. <laughs> so Vicki, I have a couple, uh, couple more questions for you. And okay. these ones are going to be a little more uh, uh, specific to you. And okay. so first off, as it relates to, you know, starting your, your marketing, uh, business and, you know, you've had it for <clears throat> over a decade now, right? Um, mm -hmm. what have been some of the challenges that you faced launching your company and, and, um, getting to where you are now? What are some of the challenges with your business that you face that you've had to overcome? And, and maybe you can speak a little bit on on that? Yeah, sure. Um, I think because I did it, one of the biggest challenges I had was, I know doing side hustles now is considered cool. <laughs> if you're like looking, to, you know, you're working for somebody else and you want to eventually start your own business. Um, and I think for me, it was just not knowing what I didn't know. And when I decided to go 100% in my business, I really wasn't a hundred percent because I came from a corporate environment. And when you go from corporate to your own business, it's like a completely different, you know, mindset, apart from the fact that you're not getting a regular paycheck, you know, you don't have the benefits. Um, I'm really good at accountability. And if I'm going to do something, I'm going to get it done, but you don't have the same resources. There, there's a lot of things that you have to think through that you're not going to have when you go in. And you need to put yourself in the mindset of going all in. So I, I think looking back that I actually had one foot still in like the corporate pool, kind of like as a safety net, like, hey, if this isn't going to work, I can always go back and, and work in corporate. And it took longer to get to the point of being like, I am 100% in my business and I am like full throttle moving forward. Um, so I would say that if you're going to start your own business, just make sure that you're in the right mindset to say everything else that you've done before business wise needs to be behind you. Don't think about it. Just focus on your business and move forward. Well, that's really cool. And <clears throat> yeah, definitely, um, <laughs> definitely can relate to, uh, 
to some of that. So thank you for sharing. Yeah. I would say another thing too, I don't want to leave you with just one. <laughs> Cause you're like, ah, give me some more. Um, I would say another thing is too, is that, and I waited too long on this when it, especially when it came to like editing videos, because I was like finding joy in actually doing it. But then I'm like, why am I not getting anything else done? Oh, cause I'm spending so much time editing my videos. It know when it's time to outsource. It doesn't necessarily have to be videos. You know, it could be, you know, if you're doing your own books, you know, when to hire an accountant, if you're doing all of your own admin stuff and you hate it, it's taking all of your time, know when to hire a VA, you know, just know what's going on in your business so that you can see what's bringing you joy and what's zapping your energy. So that when you're at the point that you can outsource or hire someone to do those things that are zapping your energy, you can stay focused on your business with the positive energy, which is going to help propel you forward. Yeah, it's so true. I find people tend to look at it like, well, if I, you know, if I, if I'm doing my own books or, um, you know, editing my own videos or whatnot, I'm saving, you know, a few hundred dollars a month or however much. But then when you look at all the time needed to, uh, do that, it's like, well, you could outsource this and then really bring in, you know, another couple thousand or few thousand focusing more on your business rather than like the administrative side or some <laughs> of the back end work that is still important needs to get done, but you could hire someone to do that mm -hmm. and then like 10 X your value or 10 X your time that way. Yeah. So I would just say to have people ask not what's your hour, not to ask like what your hourly rate is, but what's your time worth yeah. and then make a decision based on what you have coming in and going out, what, how profitable you are, at what point do you want to like bring in some help? Cause that's going to be really helpful. If you want to become a, you know, billion dollar business, you can't keep doing the same things that you're doing today. If you're not already a billion dollar business, you know, you have to make changes and the best way to do that is to bring in people and then hire people who are good at what they do. Don't micromanage, you know, you hired them for a reason. So just make sure that the communication setting goals, the expectations are there. And then also the consequences of the expectations aren't met, follow through with it and just make sure that you have a really solid team that you can rely on. So you can focus on your business. I like that. Um, yeah. what are some of the, uh, what are some of the current projects that you have? coming up or, or you're currently working on? So my biggest project that I have going on right now, and I'm actually launching it on November 15th. So a little over a week is I am launching a, um, it's a do it yourself, like full, like all 360 view of doing videos yourself. So it's essentially like an online course, but it's like videos for each step. Um, so they're like, you know, short videos, but it's walking through different steps. And I'm taking everything from, if you don't even have your brand voice identified, if you don't have your personas identified, if you don't have um, like a solid infrastructure that you could tell somebody about your business in place, like we're talking about going all the way back into the weeds and then using technology, um, tools like ChatGPT to establish the solid foundation and then start from there in building a library of videos that you can use. So it's finding content to talk about. It's um, writing the scripts for you, like getting the hooks, the talking points, the, the calls to action, like essentially having these tools do everything for you. So all you have to do is record. So I'm going to be giving everything in this. I'm calling it video value because it's going to be affordable for everybody. Amazing. It's going to be like, you can buy this for, you know, Christmas gifts or holiday gifts, or, you know, somebody starts their business, give this to them. It's going to be like that low. Um, cause I want people to have the resources and I've worked with enough clients, you know, I've had enough questions asked that I can outline this entire process, put it all in one place and then give it to people so that they can use and they can actually just hit the ground running and have everything they need to set them up for success. Amazing. If you, uh, if you send me the link to that, I will put that in the show notes as well. 
Okay. I think that's very... Right now, there's just a coming soon page, but it'll be launched on the 15th. I'll send you that Perfect. one. Perfect. Perfect. Um, with what you've done in the last couple of years, um, what, um, I, I guess, what are some of the more recent success stories that you've had? Because, um, like I said, I've, I've seen you posting so much and you're always, you know, working on, on delivering value and, and, you know, working with clients to help generate business for them and, and do all that. So I'm just curious, like, what are some of the success stories you've, you've had in some of your previous programs? Yeah. So, um, the other programs that I have are, um, it's one, it's like a completely done for you service. So it's the opposite of the one I just talked about. So, I and my team will do everything except for record and we'll do all the planning and everything for you, um, including the editing, hand it to you, you publish it, you're good to go. Um, And then I've got like an in-between program where it's done with you. So it's kind of like a weekly um, accountability. And I've had a lot of success with that because a lot of times I've done, I've done it where I've let people go and they do the work. But then after that time is done, you know, working with me, then they don't do anything else. So I've had the most success working one-on-one with people and having those weekly check-ins where we get on the phone, we get on Zoom and, you know, we talk through like where they're at. It could be something like just getting confident on camera. So I've worked with people who are just, they're scared to death to get on camera and by the time we're done working, they're on camera, they're, they're recording videos. And then I've worked with people who are just like, ah, I'm creating videos, but like, it's not consistent because they just, it's overwhelming to think if you start thinking about all the different parts, it very quickly can become overwhelming. So some people I've worked with, it's getting on the, on the phone or on zoom every week and just being like, okay, you know, here's what you need to do this coming week. Here are the different action items. Are you okay with that? Just making sure that there's agreements. Can you get these done? Is it realistic with the amount of time? Yes, it is. And then the next week we get on the call and make sure that those things were done. Um, So that actually has worked really well. Um, I know it's not a scalable model for my business, but it's something that I enjoy right now. And it's giving people the confidence they need to get on camera. They're creating videos with consistency. Those are the things that bring me a lot of joy. (laughs) I love to help people. Um, So right now that's, that's where I've been having the most success with people seeing success um, is just working one-on-one with them. Amazing. (laughs) I love it. Well, it sounds like you've got quite an awesome setup for various different, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Degrees of where people are at. So I think that's really yeah. cool what you're doing. Now, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I enjoy it. So here's here's the big question of the day. Do you okay. have bring it do on? You have uh, one to three books that you could recommend the audience check out. <clears throat> and it doesn't have to be genre specific. It doesn't have to be related to really any topic that we discussed today. But if you could provide, okay. Just a few few book recommendations. That would be amazing. Yes, I've got I've got a few. <laughs> My first book recommendation is actually the first thing that came to mind, and it's called "The Art of Possibilities." Um, it's a book by Benjamin Zander and his wife Rosamund Zander. Um, he was actually. I think he's still around. I actually saw him in person. Um, He came and he's like a public speaker too, but he was the conductor of the Boston Philharmonic Orchestra. Okay. Phenomenal human being. Um, And then his wife is a, um, she's a psycho, not a psychologist. Um, She's something with the mind. I can't remember what it is. Psychotherapy. She's a psychotherapist. That's what it is. (laughs) I find joy in like the psychology and the marketing side of things. So this was like a really, really powerful book. 
Um, and when you see him in person, when you read the book, it just like kind of comes through because he's like very energetic. He's very animated and he's very engaging. Um, but the book is all about creativity and how you can incorporate that into just being a human, like in the day-to-day -day things that you do. Um, and I talk about how I'm not creative when it comes to like drawing or, you know, art or anything like that. But I'm, I'm very creative when it comes to thinking and like problem solving. And I think that's why that book resonated with me and why I think it's, it should be a must read for everybody. Cool. I'm definitely going to check that one out. <laughs> it's a quick read too. It's not too bad. Um, the second book that I have um, that I would recommend is called The Traveler's Gift. And that's by Andy Anders. Um, this is a book about um, an individual who's down on his luck. He's experiencing a lot of failures and he's got the what's next, woe is me, the life is out to, or, you know, the world is out to get me mentality and he needs to be flipped. He needs his mind flipped. So he gets into a car accident and he then goes into this, I don't know, coma, trance, I don't know what it was, but he travels back in time and meets some of the world's leaders and heroes of our time, people like Abraham Lincoln or Anne Frank, um, and has conversations with them at their most pivotal moments in their lives to get like their insights as to what they were going through and just applying it to his, his life. It actually gives me shivers to think about it. <laughs> I love that book. Um, so that would be another book I would recommend just because I think a lot of I mean, I've gotten into the into this headspace before too, and I'm sure many other people have too, is that you just get into this mindset of like, what the hell else is gonna oops, sorry, I don't know if we can cuss on this yeah, or fine. not, but <laughs> what else is gonna happen in this, you know? <laughs> you said no. Can you believe that out? <laughs> no, I said I said that's fine. That's that's totally fine. Oh okay. but I said a lot worse. So like what else is gonna happen? Yeah. <laughs> what else is gonna happen? You know, you just have like a bad day. Um, so it's just that kind of thing. So I think that would be applicable to anybody because it kind of shows you how you can kind of change your your thoughts based on what you focus on. Absolutely. And then the third book I have is Everything is Figure Outable, which is a Marie Forleo book. Are you familiar with Marie Forleo? Yep. yep. I first heard her yeah. so I love with her. Uh, Darren Hardy, I think. Yes. Yeah. She is just an amazing human. I've loved her ever since I found her. I think she was doing YouTube or something at one point. She's got that edutainment. Um, factor, you know, in her videos, or she used to. Um, and, you know, this is just about anything except for like death, you know, things that are like guaranteed in this world, you know, things that we can't control. <clears throat> um, everything is figure outable. And when you read the book, and you hear her talk about it, and you start thinking about it, and you're like, yeah, she's right. Everything is figure outable. Just when you think that you're just like, well, what if, well, and it's like, no, <laughs> she's right. Everything is figure outable. So it's just a great book for any situation if you think you're constantly getting stuck or just to kind of help you get out of your own way. Um, and she's also very much into how the brain works and psychology and how that works in business. And um, it's just a it's a very interesting book. So it would be one that I would recommend as well. Cool. I will have to check that out as well. In terms of uh, the second book there, the Andy Andrews book, Andy Andrews, mm -hmm. I saw at a conference back in like 2015 or something. And oh, really? I, yeah, he was by far the best speaker that I've ever seen. I've seen like John Maxwell and um, like Jesse mm. Itzler and stuff like that. But his uh, not not. I guess it wasn't that he was the best well-spoken or however you want to word that. It was the value that was delivered in it had the most, uh, I guess, profound impact on my thinking. So the fact that you were talking about his book and how it impacts your thinking and, and your, you have control over your thoughts... I mm -hmm. totally can see how that applies because some of the things he said were like, just hit you in the face <laughs> and it was insane. Yeah. <laughs> so I have not read that book. I like yet. those. Kind yeah. of 
You did read that I, book? I haven't, but I remember him talking about that book. And it's, I don't know yeah. why I haven't read it. <laughs> I would recommend reading it. If you liked him as a speaker, then you'll like this book. Yeah, I would love to see him speak. Yeah, he's like, he's very ADHD or, or kind of squirrely brain. <laughs> and he'll say that. Oh, okay, and yeah. <laughs> so he'll be talking about one thing and then he'll like kind of go off on another tangent and come back to it which is kind of funny but he's like high energy and just the what he has to say and and how he makes you think about things and just his concepts on on stuff is just phenomenal oh that's awesome <laughs> yeah. i love to hear that well that's hopefully those are books that people listening or watching will see interest in and look them up and you know Buy them. We've got holidays coming up. If you're watching this before the holidays, then holiday gifts, they'd be good ones. Absolutely. Yeah. Those, uh, I'm, I'm not familiar with the first uh, two people that you mentioned, but definitely like Andy <laughs> Andrews and, and uh, what's her name? Marley, uh, how do you pronounce it? Marie Forleo. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the value that they bring and all the things that I've seen them in is just phenomenal so i can only imagine their books are jam-packed with with loads of golden nuggets as well yeah it's just all things that get you thinking and those are the types of books that i like to read um i mean i like to like the real business books that talk about here's a sales process or here's the marketing tool like those aren't the ones that i actually find joy in reading i'll read them if i have to mm -hmm. but these are the ones that I like because there's in each one of them, there's a component of like psychology yep. and just like mental, mental health, I guess, maybe mental preparation. Yeah. Yeah. I like that kind of stuff. I think you would enjoy the book. What's in it for them by Joe Polish. It's what's in it for them. I'll write that one down. It's um, by Joe Polish. I, I'm reading it right now and I followed Joe Polish for, probably eight to 10 years now. And he's all about mm -hmm. uh, like, he has a podcast called I love marketing and he, his, his um, ideas or his, the way he thinks about things, especially in terms of marketing, the psychology combined with marketing is just phenomenal. And in that book, he really goes deep on, the psychology on like human behavior as it relates to not just marketing, but like addictions and stuff. And he does it in a mm -hmm. very um, empath empathetic way. So it's not like, mm. here's how you take advantage of people. It's completely the opposite. It's, this is what people are dealing with. Mm. And to be compassionate about that, but then also how that relates to your messaging and, and that sort of thing. So I think you would enjoy that book. Mm -hmm. I think I would too, based on how you're describing it. It sounds like it would just align with the other types of books that I like reading. Absolutely. It'll be added to my Christmas list. Perfect. <laughs> well, Vicki, I really appreciate you taking the time to come on here and, and share some of your knowledge. And like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll get some of those links from you to put in the show notes, uh, the planning guide, and then uh, also the new program you have coming up. And um, mm -hmm. I guess lastly, how can how can people connect with you? How how would you like them to reach out? Um, the best way is if it's social media, I would just say on LinkedIn. I'm um, just to look me up there, Vicky O'Neill. Um, if they want to reach out to me, you know direct then go to my website and all my contact information's on there or all my social handles too they can do it there too cool all right well once again thank you for coming on and uh yeah we will we'll definitely be talking some more and I'll, i will be following your content from here on out because it's literally the first thing that pops up on my linkedin <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to keep that up so you keep seeing it first yeah. thing whenever you get in there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Well, well, thank you so much for having me on your podcast, Steve. I really appreciate it. It's been great. I've enjoyed our conversation. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I really appreciate it. Well, that was an awesome interview. I had so much fun with 
with Vicky O'Neill. And like I said, I'll be putting some of her stuff up in the show notes and it'll include how you can connect with her. Uh, she's very active on LinkedIn. And like I said, she always pops up as soon as I get on there and you won't regret connecting with her on there because of all the value that she offers. Also with her free planning guide and then the upcoming program that she's got going on, I think that's going to be amazing. And so once again, really want to thank you for, for coming on the show. I'll also be sharing the book recommendations that she had. And um, yeah, I think there is a lot of value in today's interview as it relates to video and just, you know, getting, getting in front of the camera, putting yourself out there and, you know, you got to start somewhere, just do it and, you know, follow her for some great advice and I'll definitely be checking her, her YouTube page as well. Um, but yeah. I want to thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of the Promo Minds podcast interview series. And until next time, take care. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Promo Minds podcast. I'm Steve Leslie. And if you want help crafting your message or sharing your story, feel free to reach out. I'd love to help. I uh, love coming up with ideas. And, uh, you know, we can have a nice chat. So reach out to promominds at gmail.com and I'll respond. Take care.